Hi, Big Tractor Power fans. This video comes to you from the Renner Stock Farm located in Belleville, Illinois. In this video, we're going to take a tour of the farm's extensive four-wheel drive tractor collection. We're going to see a total of 38 articulated and rigid frame four-wheel drive tractors as we take a tour with Tom and John Renner. The Renners would also like to invite you to their 100 Years of Horsepower event that is going to take place as a large field day at the end of August 2022. You'll be able to see all these big four-wheel drives in addition to repowered tractors, row crop tractors, combines, corn pickers, horse-drawn equipment, and much more. We're here with Tom and John Renner, the Renner Stock Farms in Belleville, Illinois, and I've had the opportunity to visit here a few times, and it's just such an amazing amount of tractors and antiques that you have here, and you're going to be hosting a big show in August of 2022 where everybody that's watching this is welcome to come, bring your own tractor to plow, you're going to have corn harvesting, horses, antiques, all sorts of things. So tell me all about this show and uh, we definitely want people to come out and see it. Well, first of all, it's gonna be the 25th, 6th and 7th of August, Thursday, Friday and Saturday. That'll give Sunday for a, a go home day. And uh, we're featuring muscle tractors, uh, classic tractors, classic four wheel drive tractors and uh, repowers. repowers. Yeah. repowers. Definitely repowers. We're gonna see a few here on a, on a tour today with you guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got a, a number of repowers coming. Uh, we're going to feature uh, corn harvesting, both, both with pickers and old combines. And one thing unique about our show is we have everything from oxen plowing to the latest, like an 8RX in the field, old and new, everything in the middle. And that, so basically it's a cross between the hundreds of horsepower, old, old, and the half century progress show and all the stuff in the middle, which is kind of unique. You can't go anywhere and, and have, go to a show and have the old and the new at the same spot. Well, that's going to be very exciting. And what I'm really looking forward to is big tractor power, big four-wheel drives. We can look at a nice lineup here of a variety of tractors, and we're going to take a look at some of those. Uh, but, John, how do we find out more about this show? What um, Where so can people learn about it? Our website is 100yearsofhorsepower.com. You can find out all the information there as far as where you can stay, what's all going to be here. Um, that's a good place to start. Otherwise, you can follow us on all of our social media accounts, Renner Stock Farms, uh, Instagram, TikTok, uh, Facebook, YouTube. We'll have updates as far as uh, anything we do with the show. You guys can go there and check that out. Um, our big feature this year is Don Duffner. He's got the triple 830s, the three 830s in a row, because we're featuring tandem tractors as well. And that's a two-cylinder John Deere 830, yeah. Yeah. which is a pretty mm -hmm. cool tractor. He's going to be coming. Um, our big thing with our show, too, is that this is a nonprofit, so all of our proceeds go back to farm charities, 4-H, FFA. We keep enough money back to get the show going again in two years, but everything else we'd like to donate to... Uh, the local community so that's great and you've got a few acres out here behind the farm uh, how many acres are you going to be harvesting and plowing about 350 acres of crops and and basically when it comes to plowing we've got these big tractors are going to eat up the acres pretty quick so we'll probably end up rolling and plowing it maybe two or three times so the, the show can go on hard and heavy for three days and that um well that's exciting well i hope everybody that's watching this wants to come out and see it i and we'll definitely cover it on Big Tractor Power YouTube. But let's take a tour and look at some of the big four-wheel drives and the muscle tractors uh, that'll be out here in the field working in a few months. One thing I might add, Jason, a lot of people call and say, well, uh, uh, is there anything for the wife to do? Have you got any shopping mall? <laughs> and like, yeah, we have a shopping mall very close. But we have this year a she show. And basically it's, it's stuff for the ladies. We, they're going to have all kind of arts and, arts and crafts and, and different things that what ladies would enjoy. Uh, so bring your wife. Uh, bring the kids. They got stuff for the kids doing that kind of stuff too. We have an IGPRA rodeo, a junior rodeo. We'll have mutton busting, junior bulls, and uh, uh, the show will go on in the evening. We've got music every night, mm -hmm. a nice band every evening. So there'll be things to do from morning till nightfall. It sounds exciting. I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. Well, let's get a preview of some of the big tractors that'll be there. So, Tom, this is definitely big tractor power. The Steiger Tiger was the ultimate tractor in the late 70s and 80s for many people. And a little later in the tour, we're going to see one of those tandem tractors that you talked about that was built by the Steiger family. But the Tiger was the ruler of the field in the Tiger, late 70s. Tiger was definitely the big dog in its day. 
and we have a 450 right here and a 470 over there. Uh, they did make a few of the 470s with the 3408. This particular one's got the 1150 Cummins, and the 450's also got the 1150 Cummins. Maybe you've seen this tractor in the field before at the Half Century Progress Show. Uh, and, and our plow, day, we pull a 14 bottom plow with this tractor right here, and it, it does it pretty much with ease. Now they got the Allison transmission. It's one of my favorite tractors to actually drive. Well, they're, they they got a bigger cab than a regular Steiger. They just have a, a cool factor and a lot of power. They do. A very cool factor, yeah. yep. Well, yeah. in addition, I'm a Steiger fan. That's probably my favorite brand when they were green Steigers. But I also am a big fan of 2 Plus 2s. And you have an Anteater over here, which right. is pretty neat. We have a neat. here that we've just <clears throat> got done going through. It's actually a little hard one. It's only got about 2,500 hours on it. It's got the, wow. the western cab inside of it. And, uh, Can we see the Western cab? Sure. That, yeah. that was kind of a neat option for the IH. Today we get red leather seats and things like that, but back then this was the luxury item. Yeah, if you look at that, see, it's got the, the Western interior here on the, on the side pads here and that also. Very nice. I and remember seeing for, that in the sales brochure. Uh, for a tractor of its age, it's in awfully nice, awfully nice condition in that. Well, let's take a look at this uh, big bud and this is our our big bud that we've uh, restored, and it's an HN 250. Actually, it's been converted to a 320. Uh, it is turbocharged. Uh, a real neat tractor to drive. It's a a 70 model they started making, I believe, in 69. So That's right. HN 250 production. was the first model they they offered. Uh, very early production tractor. Uh, I'm glad you converted it to a 320 because I accidentally called that a 320 in one of my videos. And <laughs> a lot of my viewers reminded me it said 250 yeah. on the side. So yeah. maybe it wasn't all wrong. Yeah, that wasn't all wrong. Uh, next to here, we got a couple of muscle tractors. And that, uh, this 5020 here has got the V12 in it. And... Uh, uh, I like the duels on it. That's a lot well, of tractor. It's, it's going to get converted to 900s. In that okay. For the show, it'll probably have about 900s on it. But yeah, it's a, uh, it's a lot nicer to haul with the 900s. and uh, It just handles a little better with the 900s in that. Is that a 900 on this one next right, right there? Okay. Right here. This is one John's worked on. John, you want to tell them a little bit about what you've done to this tractor? Yeah, so this is a 5020 with an 8B71T Detroit. It's pushing about 360 horsepower or so. Um, pretty much went top to bottom on it. Uh, the big 900s in the front, 16.5, 16.1 tires in the in the front. Sorry, 900s in the back. We took a console off of a 45.20 and redid the hydraulics. That way, uh, the hydraulics weren't up on the uh, dash anymore because the turbo was in the way of the remotes. It's got Wheatland fenders and 50.10 side shields on it. Uh, so that's it's kind of a 5010 slash 5020. There's parts from both tractors on there. Okay. It's got the small 5010 fuel tank up front because uh, some of the stuff had to be moved forward because of the bigger engine. And it's my favorite thing to drive by far. You can it's, make a little noise with this tractor. Every time. Yeah. And you, you had this at Half Century this year yep, plowing. Yeah, it was at Rantoul. The V12 was at Rantoul. Jake's 4520. You'll see that here in a little bit. That was also at Rantoul. So. We had about 20 inches in the hood on a V12 to get everything in there. Mm. Mm -hmm. So here we are on the front side of the, the repower, and this is a V12. big tractor. Big tractor. Yeah. <laughs> How much horsepower comes out of this one? We've never dined or anything like that. I, I don't think the PTO would begin to hold it. I okay. It's 450 yeah. without turbos. Yeah. Well, that'd be 12 Detroit, yeah. I think. That's a lot of horsepower. Without the turbos. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's it's... It's, it's, it's fun to drive. <laughs> <laughs> with the earplugs. Yeah, yeah, with the earplugs. <laughs> Definitely with the earplugs. Positively, absolutely with the earplugs. Yeah. All right, we've got the FW34, which is basically another Steiger tractor made for Ford. I always think this is one of the prettiest four-wheel drives with the it pinstriping. Is, it is. It's, it's a very pretty. I got the pinstripes, and it is the right pinstripes, but... Uh, they, I got them from England. Okay. And that, uh, these were extremely popular over there. Yeah, That's they, they, they're so a lot of a lot of the '60s were sold in England too, and at this, uh, and that, but uh, no, it's uh, uh, the paint. The paint scheme is, is almost too pretty for a farm tractor, <laughs> you know. And that, but it, 
It's fun. To this is one I'd like. <laughs> this is one I'd like to get filmed out in the field. It's well, it's a pretty one. We're gonna have it out there. Sounds yeah. good. Right over here next to it's a 946, a little later model tractor. Good old Ford designation six versatile. Yes. Uh, Got the 8970. We'll have in the field. 8960 will be in the field. Let's take a look at the 8970. So this is a Cummins powered right, John Deere. 855 Cummins head. What size tires do you have on this one? Uh, L710 32. Okay. Yep. Oh, very good it's tractor. A real pleasurable tractor drive. It's 1150 versatile. And it's got the 1150 Cummins motor in it. Uh, gobs of power, gobs of torque. Uh, really a nice tractor driving. Uh, this this tractor is, is pretty scarce. I think one of the reasons for the scarceness back in the day, this was a huge tractor, and like the Steiger Tiger, had a big price tag on it. I think it was like a hundred and seventy-eight thousand dollar tractor back in the day. That's right. And you think when we had back in that day, we had a lot of four-wheel drives that you could buy smaller, actually, but you could buy in a thirty-five thousand dollar range. It's, it's no wonder that we didn't sell a lot of these. I think mean, a lot of people would have liked to have had them, but they just couldn't afford it. And it amazes me today that 470 horsepower is mid-range. Yeah. <laughs> and right. I have filmed some uh, road track Steigers at 470 that are cultivating corn. So it's definitely, when this was built, you were pulling a huge chisel plow or a yeah. big plow. You definitely, you definitely had the big horse when you had one of these. And one of the neat things about this tractor is it's a custom, which meant that versatile had the chrome on the muffler right. and I think the shifter was chrome and then you've I guess we can walk back here and look at it's got a custom decal on the cab yep. so we can see where it says 1150 custom and just another great variation to look for in big tractors got another repower back here in the corner So what, what's the power plant in this one? Uh, 871. Okay. And a 4520. And uh, it's a straight transmission. Um, got a lot of power. Uh, Jake pulls six bottom plow with this. And not. it'll be at the show. I bet we'll know exactly where it is when it's plowed. You will be able to, you will be able to find it very easily. Yes. So the Traction King. This is the this first one. tractor I ever rode in was a Case 24 Traction King and a 2470 and i've always liked these tractors this is a 2670 2670 i just got it out of the shop we just finished it up it looks very nice yeah. uh 1470 here uh so this was the the first traction king and then uh they grew up to the 2670 in the mid 70s right but definitely uh it seems like it was a popular seller for case two because i see a lot of them in the old was, farming magazines this tractor was fourteen thousand five hundred dollars in 1971. that's that's hard to believe when you think about today's state i know that doesn't hardly buy an option today it doesn't and then we have the original case four-wheel drive which they're all rigid frames and the 1200 and I'm, I'm going to step around this side so we can see it but this is a really great part of history this, this tractor here actually came from colorado okay and i think that's one of the reasons the paint is as good as it is on it yet and that it wasn't exposed to much humidity at all like we have around here and that originally it came out without a turbocharger and from what i understand later on the factory Came along with a turbocharger conversion kit on it. Okay. And in that kit space, you got a pyrometer too, because you had to watch the heat, because it was. They needed a horsepower to compete, you know, because uh, basically this was. It's like 100 so, horsepower. 105, I believe, horsepower. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't many for that size tractor in that day, and they had to compete against the 4020 and 4320, and that in John Deere. So they came out with the turbocharger kit to put on them, and it really woke them up and made a nice tractor out of it. It is. It's neat that it has a cab because that's yeah. mid '60s or late '60s, and, yeah, and and for the age of the cab, it was a pretty decent cab. By yeah. today's standards, it's not, but in that day, it was a pretty nice cab. Here's one thing I always like to look for on old tractors, and it looks like we've got the original sale sticker on it too. Right. So Farm and Ranch Center, Highway 71 North, Lyman, Colorado. So if anyone watching this video remembers that dealer or knows it, it'd be pretty cool to hear about it. Right. That's right. You sure would. 
Yes, sir. So here's another one of our repowers. It's a John Deere uh, 4020 power shift with a 6V71 uh, Detroit diesel. This is a Kinsey conversion, one of the ones that he did. He did 6V71s and a lot of, or a couple 4020s. He started out with a 671 and then he moved up to the 871 when he found out that they could handle it. So um, that's pretty neat seeing it with a tricycle front end. <laughs> tricycle front end power shift. It's it's a nice tractor to drive. I don't think it'll be in the field for the show, but it'll definitely be be out and about driving okay. around. So. Um, yeah, you should put that on a, a people mover. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so now we've got it, Tom. We've got some more big four wheel drives to look at. A really nice 8430 here. This, this 8430, we did repaint it because uh, it was sitting in the shed where the sun hit it, but it's only got like 2200 actual hours on it. So it is a, a very, very low hour tractor. And uh, we've been testing some oil leaks and stuff like that. We did fix that and, and new cab material and that. But, uh, It'll also be at the show okay. in, in the field. And Looks that, nice on the singles too. It's a little bit yes. different. Yep, it's a little different that way. So here's a tractor that I like a lot as a V8 powered international 4586. It's got the red roof and the tri-stripe. So that it's a one year production model in 81. Right, it's got about uh, 3,500 hours on it. Uh, we just uh, finished cab interior paint and, and some minor oil leaks and that kind of stuff. But uh, It'll be at the show. I don't know what we'll do with it exactly yet, but it's definitely going to be in the show. Also. It'll be a good tractor. Be smoothing everything out behind the the might, plows. <laughs> might, might be a roller tractor or something like that, or a big disc tractor. They've got a good growl to them. Yeah, uh, we've got an eighty twenty back here, and that uh, this will be at the show. We've got a fully mounted eight bottom plow uh, that we're having a show, and we know of three eighty twenties that'll be at the show, and as many as five. It'll be, it'll be nice to see that many 8020s. A pretty rare yes. to have that many at a show. Just under 100 built, so that's yep. A, yep. a percentage. That's a good percentage. You betcha. You betcha. Well, we've got some more uh, John Deere four wheel drives back here. Yeah. 7520 and 7020. The 7520, uh, I've owned it three different times myself, and most of the hours that are on this tractor I put on myself as our first four wheel tractor that we ever bought. And uh, actually, at one time we had three of them, and then upgraded to 8630s and, and all up the line from there. But I kept this one back, and and we still use it, and it's it's really a nice tractor. Very nice. And then yeah. we have the 7020, which just celebrated a 50th anniversary last right. year. Yep, yep. Uh, it's it's a pretty nice. It's an original tractor. It's still pretty straight yet, and uh, runs real good. It's bareback, and uh, uh, we haven't used this in, in the field much, like we have this one right here. Or not. Very nice. Yeah. And we've got some other four wheel drives to see down this way, so we'll head over there. Slide around. So, Tom, uh, I got to take a tour with you about a year ago, and we looked at this tractor, and it's a 4166, but it has a 4186 on the side. And the original owner of this tractor recognized that and uh, got right. cut. He lived about 40 miles away from me in Kentucky, so neat tractor and a right. little bit of history. Right. I, I talked to him, he called me, I think, after the, after the show. And we didn't paint this tractor. I think he painted the tractor coming up. That's right. And, that, and uh, uh, we did a few, thing, few things to it when we got it. And uh, uh, I've not had it in the field much at all yet, but uh, intend to have it out there on our horse Well, day. the 4166 is on my wish list of films. Very cool. This is kind of a, a rare tractor. It's a 300 versatile uh, hydro. Uh, a lot of fun to drive. It's, it's just handy as pockets in the shirt. I mean, uh, uh, you just got a couple of ranges and basically forward and backward on a lever, and uh, uh, it, it's a real nice tractor. It's not a big tractor, but it's a nice tractor uh, in the field. It'd be a good planting tractor for a smaller farmer and that type of stuff. And uh, uh, oh, it looks good. It's definitely a rare one. It's definitely a rare one. Right. And then these are the the granddaddies of the. Right. The versatile tractor line. D145 is the diesel here, and uh, we've had it through the shop and uh, uh, no cab. It's it makes you appreciate what we have today, really. Yes. Nice. But a very nice tractor. It's got good horsepower and and handles well and uh, a lot of fun to drive. And which model is this down here next to it? This is the 125. We haven't done much to this. It it needs uh, uh, a little TLC. Uh, runs pretty good. It's a gas. We've got a 394 engine in it, and uh, uh, 
a little hard on gas, but uh, it's got a good horsepower. Back sure. in the day, that was really something. Something like this. Yes, it was. Would, would really been something to have in the field. Yeah. Then we have John Deere's one and only eight V8 powered tractor, the 8850. Uh, we'll have this tractor in the field. <clears throat> We've also got one that's got a Kinsey repower in it. Okay. With the 855, it'll be in the field also. And the 8850 is celebrating a 40th anniversary this year. Yeah, time's flying. It definitely <laughs> is. No, it's, it's a real nice tractor, and uh, uh, we had it through the shop, and uh, uh, hopefully got both of them out there in the field. Very nice. And then two of the most, I guess, expensive John Deere tractors today are the, are the WA Wagner built models, the 14 and the 17. Yeah, the 14 and 17, <clears throat> a very limited production. I think 26, I believe, of the 14s built, and yep. less than 100. I think, I, I know one of them is like a 28 and 20, they're both very limited. So we've got the, here's our WA-17 and the 14 uh, you've had out at Rantoul. And I never thought that I would film one of these tractors in the field. And you made that dream come true by taking it out there to plow. You know, we have this, uh, we've got a 12 bottom pair of six bottom uh, 3,100 plows put together in tandem. And this pulls 12 bottoms, actually pretty nice. Very solid tractor. Yes, it is. Yeah, when you look at the at the the front end and the fenders and that, how thick they are. It's you know I think it's three eighths metal on the fenders and its front end must be half inch plate. It's <laughs> it, it's it's built like a battleship. <laughs> so Tom, we have a, a tandem tractor here before articulated four wheel drives to get more power. People hooked two row crops together or two standards. Uh, is this this is something that we're going to see at the show actually out in the field? This is something we're going to see at the show. And I guess what's kind of unique about this, this was supposedly made by the Steiger brothers before they made their number one Steiger. Okay. And they got their idea of articulation, basically, by putting these two tractors together. And like their first Steiger that they made, it didn't steer with a steering wheel. It steered with hydraulic wheels, and that's exactly how this one steered. And, uh, they put, so you basically raise your plow on one set of levers and you steer the tractor with other set of levers. So it's kind of entertaining to keep it, you know, in so. the furrow, but uh, it's really unique. And it was one of the first tractors that they were involved with the neighbor in building. And basically after this, the next year, they just designed and built Steiger one in the barn. Interesting. I want to take a look at the controls up here. So this is two John Deere D's hooked together or? These are two John Deere D's put together, okay. correct? Yep, those le that looks very similar to the the Barney Steiger. Yeah, and basically uh, you oper operate them both from the back tractor, and the one had electric start and the one was hand start, so basically you put the one in the front in gear and uh, push it with the back tractor and you had them both running. 2655 Oliver. Uh, we haven't started on it yet, but... Uh, uh, it's in our it looks, it's looks, run, it runs, but it just needs a, a, a It looks very clean for a 50 year old tractor. That's a. It's pretty nice. Yeah, it's pretty nice. It looks pretty nice. I always it's liked cool. how they had the tri stripe gold and black and white stripe over the hood like that. Yeah. And the Minneapolis Moline, the Plainsman, the Cockshut, and the 2655 were all basically spin offs of the A4T 1600. That's right, for Moline. And, and they made a few AE. 1400 I think it was a very limited like yes 14 of and 12455 Oliver and 124 mm -hmm. so I hope you find it yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, look good with it yeah. so we also this is kind of becoming a classic here is the 8960 and uh, just a great tractor from the early 90s we don't think of it as an old tractor because we're still using a lot <laughs> people get mad at me when I say that yeah, and I say but, well it's, it's 30 really years like old <laughs> we really like it this is been a tractor one of the very first new tractors I ever bought in that. And uh, uh, we've had it all its life and uh, it's been good to us all the time. We haven't had any problem with it at all, basically. Well, it looks good out there on that big 12 bottom plow. It does, it handles it real well. So Tom, here we have a Zumac Red Minneapolis Moline A4T 1600. And yes. uh, just like the Oliver 2655 that we saw earlier. Yes, the only thing, this is an LP gas model. The 2655 was a diesel. Now this has got the 504 motor in it, about 169 horsepower, and uh, uh, a very good, reliable tractor. They made the uh, A4T 1600 uh, in the Minneapolis Moline, the Plainsman, uh, the 2655, the Oliver, and the Co-op. 
That's Always right. The, the same tractor, whether it's gas or diesel. Yep, the good Plainsman. And also, you could order the Moline and Energy Yellow. And it looks like this one may have a few flakes of that it's Energy Yellow under there. Yellow on it. Uh, it's, the man said he bought it. It was the second owner. Uh, it's low hour. It's under 3,000 hours on it. And uh, uh, so I don't know, really know if it was originally a yellow tractor and it painted Zumax well, or whatever. But you know, underneath color is yellow. I've always wanted to meet the person who made the decisions at White Farm Equipment in 1971 because there are some oddball tractors. They, you see some colors painted over. Absolutely. All the, all the brands. Yeah, definitely. Oh. And this one was sold by Mo Implement. In Minnesota. Yep. So an Oliver Moline dealer. would like to hear if you know this dealership. It looks like it's Hitterdon. Yeah, Hitterdon, Minnesota. Minnesota. Well, Tom, we have another 8850 here, and this is the Kinsey Repower. Uh, can you tell us a little about this one? Yeah, this is uh, our 8850 with the Kinsey Repower in it. And basically, Deer had quite a bit of trouble with the 955 VH that they had come out with originally. And Kinsey went ahead and put the 855. So actually, in cubic inches, they went down in horsepower, but they actually created a little bit more horsepower to this. And it was a lot more dependable horsepower. They had to stretch the track a little bit. Put a little piece in the back of the hood to get everything in there, and it's got a tilt hood on it, which was really nice. And uh, uh, it's got the chrome stack. That's always a sure sign. Yeah. It's a repower. And basically, it made a, a nice engine to work on and uh, a real reliable unit. Horsepower wasn't a lot more than it came out with originally, a little more, but uh, uh, it was a dependable horsepower. Well, another horsepower is over here. It's a Panther Three Steiger. Which was probably the best-selling Steiger that they that they built. Uh, yeah, we've just put new rubber on this, and we're going to give it a uh, a facelift on the inside of the cab and on the outside. And I've been these Panthers were a real good, dependable tractor. Probably one of the most popular tractors that they built. This is our Cougar 3 ST 270. Uh, we just got out of the paint shop, uh, put a new interior in it, and that. And uh, I'm anxious to get it in the field. We haven't had it in the field yet. It's a great looking tractor. It looks brand new. It's, yes. I always like these uh, American flag colors, a decal. And then over here, we've got a Case 4890, which was their big tractor in the late 70s. It was a 300 horse tractor <clears throat> in the 70s. That was a big tractor then. Absolutely. Yeah. And what model versatiles uh, here? 555. Here we can see the versatile triple nickel. Very nice tractor, and this looks like it came from Ritchie Motors from Cobb, Wisconsin, which was also an Alice Chalmers dealer. And we'll look forward to seeing the 555 in action. This is our 850 Versa. It'll definitely be at the show. I don't know if we'll have it on it yet, but it'll definitely be there. Very clean tractor. Yes, yes it is. Very nice. Very nice tractor. Behind it, we got the... AC 440. It is white cab. Oh, well, that's the early one. Yeah, it is white cab. AC 440. Uh, it's got the triple nickel in it. And uh, we've got a lot of work to do it, but hopefully I got it, it done by the show. I can't guarantee that, but if nothing else, it, it runs. Otherwise, it's a nice one to have. The yeah, it's... When Steiger teamed up with Alice on this, Alice really helped uh, out in the manufacturing process That's at Steiger and improving it. That Alice was very helpful to Steiger, and I think it was a good partnership really at the time. Absolutely. Yeah. This is our 1805 Massey. Got a 32-weight cat in it. Uh, 18 438 duels on it. Manual transmission. Uh, it's a runner right now, but it does need quite a little bit of, of restoration work on it. I don't know if we'll have it ready for the show or not. But. Well, it's another nice four-wheel drive. You don't see a lot of the 1800 and 1500 series Masseys too often. And so I guess I'll trade spots with you, and then we have a nice international here on the other side. Okay. So the 4100 was their second four-wheel drive in the IH line. Second four-wheel drive. Uh, relatively low production number on it. 80, the 4300, I believe, was the low number, the lowest one in that, but... Uh, there's not many of the 4100s on either. Oh, and walk up here, and again, we've got a dealer decal. L. Swiderski implement. 
I don't know where Moseni's at, but it'd be I nice to know. I almost wonder if that's New Holland. I, I mean, Wisconsin. I've been to a Swiderski implement that's New Holland and Massey dealer in Wisconsin. But if you know that dealer, tell us about it in the comments. So we've got another big tractor here, the Steiger Bearcat. Got a Steiger Bearcat here, ST225. Uh, it's got a little bit of a manual transmission. Uh, we've been through this tractor, uh, real nice, small tractor. Yeah. Small yep. tractor. One of my neighbors had a 1976 model. That was the year I was born. So, okay. so <laughs> they, they had it so long, they called it Old Faithful. Okay. So. It's, uh, uh, definitely a real nice tractor. I'm, I'm anxious to put it in the field this spring. Uh, white <coughs> 4180. Uh, got a 32 way cat in it. Uh, manual transmission over and under. Uh, needs a little bit of work, but it's a runner for the moment. And we've got, uh, it originally came from Solder and Solder Ripple. And Ripple. Yep. White AC New Idea Kiwani Glencoe from Minick, Illinois. Another versatile, a big 700. 700 versatile. Uh, needs rubber. Uh, we have the rules for it, but we're going to put new rubber on the tractor first and give it a paint job and a lot of TLC in the cab and it needs some wiring attention and things like that. But Still looks pretty solid. Oh, yeah. So there's a Ford Designation 6 here as well. Great looking tractor. So I, I'm guessing you just Fully repainted this one too? Yes, yep. Just got it done this this fall. We've seen a lot of tractors today, and you've talked about the daily drivers and then restoring them. So this is where the magic happens to get your collection back into that original condition. This, this is where it all happens, that basically, as far as the paint is concerned. And, uh, and we took this thing down almost down to bare metal. And uh, we're working on the interior now. And I uh, just got the decals for it. But no new exhaust, and uh, it's a super wildcat. It's a barn build tractor, it's a series one. And uh, it'll make a nice tractor, but it's, it it's will. primitive. It's very primitive. Been, they, they were a big step up at their time, but when you spend a few acres in them, they're not, yeah, not as comfortable as the later ones. They're definitely not yeah. comfortable, but I think the reliability is there. It's got a 3150 cat motor in it. Very nice. And uh, the old 10 speed transmission in it. And uh, like I said, we're redoing the cam, yep. uh, putting all the, all the poster in it new, and new lights. And it's nice. Original oh. colors. Yep. It, was, green and <laughs> it stands out with the red and the green. It does. It does. Yeah. This uh, and this one was actually the first that was built at the factory. Uh, they started in '69 well, in Fargo. That's right. It doesn't have a V in it. Yep. So, but yeah. it's uh, it's just, that's a good one to have the early factory. Yeah. It is a Series 1. Oh yeah. Yep, Series 1. Red Wheels, a Series 1, and then the barn belts have the red wheels too. Yeah. Well, it's a great, good looking tractor, and this will look good out there um, in the fall, I'm sure. I'm glad we have the show. We're definitely ready for the show. Yeah, that's a I hope you've enjoyed taking this extensive tour of the Renner Stock Farm four-wheel drive tractor collection. I'd like to hear in the comment section below which one of these 37 tractors was your favorite model, and I hope that you'll consider attending the 100 Years of Horsepower event taking place in late August 2022 at the Renner Stock Farm in Belleville, Illinois. If you've enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to Big Tractor Power YouTube, where there's over 2,000 videos of farm machines in action. If you would like to see additional big tractors at work here on the channel, continue to watch this video for a few more seconds of the end screen for a direct link to more Big Tractor Power YouTube videos. As always, thank you for watching.